Okay, Nikolai, why don't you tell us what Pro Kettlebell is, um, how it developed, where you're at, and where it's going. Okay, so Pro Kettlebell, we are a new line of kettlebells. Um, came out of my experience of owning a kettlebell gym and training lots of people, and people dealing with the discomfort from using the kettlebells with the pressure on the back of their forearms. So uh, the pandemic shut down our gym, and so I had lots of time on my hands to develop a kettlebell and patent it, and we decided to throw everything that we ever wanted to see change in a kettlebell into a kettlebell. We spent all of our time and money on it, and uh, so some of the benefits are that it, uh, it rests on your arm, it's very comfortable and secure, it has a, si a higher center of mass, so it just flies a little faster, a little better. You can actually insert magnetic weights on the inside of it instead of them sitting on the bottom where it changes the center of mass and have a tendency to fly off. And they have a flat spot that matches up with the handle so they don't roll around so they're a little safer. Um, and a wider base so that you can actually uh, do planking exercises. Uh, where we're going with it right now. Actually, before you get there, sure. tell me some of the challenges that came up in the manufacturing process. Challenge number one. I don't know CAD. So we had to hire CAD designers. Uh, we've probably gone through three or four different CAD designers because they would hit uh, hiccups to where they couldn't um, put in the design what was in our heads. And so that was a big challenge. So every time we'd meet a barrier where they're like, we just can't go any further than this, we'd have to find another CAD designer to take a little bit further, another designer to take a little bit further, and finally got close enough where we could actually have one uh, milled out of wood, and then we finished the final contouring by hand with sandpaper and then re-scanned it. So that's that's problem number one. Pro well, money's problem number one. <laughs> but uh, they did hand out uh, loan money because of the, the um, right. pandemic. The coronavirus, yeah. right. And so we used that. Rather than reinvesting in the gym, we reinvested into the campus. Uh, shortage of labor. We have less foundries in the United States than we've ever had before because everything's been offshore. And uh, a lot of people just were not working during coronavirus. So Why was it important for you to find a foundry in the U.S.? Patent protection. And I believe in promoting the future of the United States uh, manufacturing. Uh, many people don't realize it, but you know we're, we're playing uh, the long game here, and if we're ever gonna get ourselves out of our current recession, uh, we have to produce our way out of it, and we can't continue to buy with borrowed money. So the only way to create more wealth for your country is to produce, and so we wanna produce here. And uh, I wanna meet the people that are that I'm working with, and I couldn't do that if it was over overseas. Mm -hmm. So that's important to me. And so, so that being said, are there any standout um, uh, inspirations in either the kettlebell market, manufacturing market specifically, or just weight training equipment manufacturing that you saw as a model of like a good, a good business model that you want to emulate, or were there specific things that you do want to do differently? other than this, the design? Uh, so as far as ADEX clubs, uh, I don't know the owner's name, but he manufactures his uh, clubs in Florida. So that was inspirational and kind of told me that it was possible. And there are a few other kettlebell manufacturers, Rogue being one, they're manufacturing a lot of their stuff, their equipment in, uh, on the East Coast. And that was like, okay, if they can do it, another person can do it. You just have to work really hard. So I, I did look towards those people. So that told you you could do it. Were there examples of poor manufacturing practices or maybe where you thought you were getting one thing, but instead you're getting another? Any any practices either in manufacturing or business that you specifically want to approach differently? You don't have to shit talk anyone. I'm <laughs> For the most part, you know, everybody I've worked with has been very forthright and upfront about, you know, if they want to do it or not. And very, and just the majority of founders I spoke to didn't want to take our job on mm -hmm. because uh, kettlebells or fitness in general is an up and down market. Right. One minute they're hot, 
next minute they're not. And, and, I and they, man, were they hot when coronavirus picked up and yes. they had we to shut down missed gyms. That wave. Oh, okay. We missed that wave. We wanted to get on it, yes. but our manufacturing uh, just was, took so long. Uh, one, our first foundry bailed on us after we, we gave them $60,000 for our initial purchase order. Mm-hmm. And then they were months and months behind. And then uh, I said, hey, what's up, guys? And then, long story short, they were like, we need to refund the money. We can't do it. Mm-hmm. And so I had to find another foundry in South Dakota. And then they got us up to speed, but they were way more expensive than any other. We were actually selling them at a loss at that point. So we had to fulfill the orders. Okay. At that point, how much doubt set in? <laughs> never a doubt. Actually, never a doubt. Um... I think maybe it's a an illness or something, but I'm like optimistic, <laughs> always. <laughs> I always think I can do things, and, and uh, my wife usually brings me down to home, but she believed right. in it too. So uh, we never doubted for a second. I always knew there was a way. I think what's interesting about Pro Kettlebell, and I don't know a lot about Kettlebell Kings, but you know they're definitely passionate about the kettlebell culture. So people get into kettlebells, and it's one of those things where it's like some people either like it or they don't. And even when you came into the sport, yes, you were into weightlifting, but you were into a different sport. So it's interesting how you're able to make that transition from one passion to another, we'll say. But how this passion evolved into a business opportunity. And it's just very interesting how that happens because for me, I mean, I run a gym, so that's my business opportunity, I guess we could say. Um, but I don't know, I never would have thought of maybe going into manufacturing. So I don't know, maybe you want to tease out some of the personal thoughts behind that whole journey. If you help enough people get what they want, you automatically get what you want. So that's how I, <laughs> that's what guides me. So uh, initially, uh, personal training was a way for me to do that. And then I found that I could only help a certain amount of people. So we scaled to open in a gym. And uh, I, I was, you know, realizing even before the coronavirus, all right, uh, scaling this gym is going to be is going to be difficult. We we're sort of looking at ways like either franchising or doing something else to, to try to hit more people. Yeah. And then when the kettlebell opportunity came by, we have an app to um, it was just like this is a possibility to a solve a problem and b like really help a lot more people get into kettlebells because it was always a hard sell on kettlebells. Mm-hmm. Uh, they either buy CrossFit or they try it and they feel bruising and they wouldn't stick with it because, you know, not everybody's cut from the same cloth you are, Sally. You know, <laughs> some people <laughs> don't want to deal with the pain yeah. that is there it's, it's the It's At the same time, it's so similar to a lot of other activities you could do where there's those growing pains where it takes a lot of practice in the beginning where stuff's kind of clunky and awkward and it doesn't feel good and you have to get past all that. You could even compare it to cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> that first cigarette yeah. where you vomit your guts out and then you have to get past that. You smoke something? <laughs> I did. Me too. <laughs> but, but now it's, a, it's all kettlebells. Yeah. <laughs> kettlebells is the drag. Yes. I'm the same way. I'm a very, uh, I guess, an addictive personality. So whatever I go into, it's like, Full on obsession. Obsession. Right on. So, uh, give me a clear view of the future here. Tell me the projects that are coming up. Uh, you did mention a Canadian competition that's coming up that you will be helping out, but um, you know, tell me about that stuff, and then also just the general, you know, future path of the of the company. Okay, so the number one thing we're working on right now is the magnetic chip weights so they can fit inside the kettlebell uh, of our own design. It's a really strong magnet, but it also has a you know, just a unique pole system so they come off easier. Will it give you superpowers? Uh, no, but it'll help you increase your weights by one and two and hopefully four <laughs> kilo increments. Kettlebell fractionals. Yeah, without having to buy more kettlebells. We want right. to save people money. so they yeah. can. And that's the hardest part. We got the design down. It's just finding a manufacturer that can do it at an affordable price. We might wind up doing it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then trying to get our kettlebells in as many people's hands as possible. So going to competitions, helping sponsor competitions, fitness expos and stuff like that. Uh, that's the fun part of the job. Right now I'm also involved in the foundry in Texas, getting our um, finishing process set up. So 
because I've had to finish all the kettlebells by myself, pretty much, with the help of like one or two friends. Yep. And we're trying to set it up so that uh, other people can go. Okay, building on the finish, you actually painted a bunch of the ones here for competition, personally. Yes. Um, do you want to give, now is this something that will continue to be done with new kettlebells off the line in the future? And um, what tips do you want to give people who have the sort of unpainted ones to do it themselves at home? So I would like to offer a painted line eventually. Same problem is uh, the, the chip weights is just finding someone who can do it at an affordable price. So far I've been quoted somewhere between $15 and $30 per kettlebell, which makes them out of the price range of, of most people. Uh, so we might wind up doing that ourselves as well, uh, which means me setting up a powder coat or something like that in my warehouse. Um, so that's in the future. It's not a super high priority because it is easy to paint your own. And I just recommend starting with a really good clean surface, scuff it up with some sandpaper, Use a good primer. I'm just going to use Rust-Oleum because it's available at most hardware stores. Rust-Oleum automotive primers work good for us. And then like a Rust-Oleum enamel paint is what I found to be the most uh, durable. And, uh, and realistically, it's going to get chipped off and beat up anyway. It's gonna, there's no other way around it. If you really want it. Unless it, you're doing snatch only. <laughs> yeah. If you really want it to be durable, you can use something like a, a Line-X or like a truck bed liner or something. Like right. That. And they sell that in colors. But it's going to feel kind of rubbery on your arms. So you that. might like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not going to think. Yeah. Might be someone's kink. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Where else are we going? So that Canadian comp? Uh, did you remember what one that? No, I haven't had a chance to look at oh, okay. it. Okay. Um, and then uh, we are doing an adjustable kettlebell at some point. Okay. Uh, that's probably two years out. I, I found that that hasn't been. People love the idea of it. But I find that adjustable kettlebells maybe just aren't really marketed a whole lot, and I could see why. Um, even I have one, and I never use the damn thing. But the, but I have a ton of other kettlebells, right? Uh, so they, they have advantages and disadvantages. I have an adjustable kettlebell too, and it seems like a good idea, except for you need like two wrenches to use it, and it takes about half an hour to change weights. It's a, it sounds good on paper, but it's actually not very good. So what's taking us a little bit longer, we want to patent the way to do it, so I can change it in three seconds, mm -hmm. and you don't need any tools. Yeah. I think what would be great, because you guys do kettlebell workouts, is doing the adjustable kettlebell workout, where you start off with the lightest weight, you take a, a rest after 10 minutes or something, you adjust the weight, now you have your middle weight, do your middle weight exercises, same thing, take a rest, and then do the next one. You might already already have that, and I don't even know. We're well. I'm thinking about that, right? That's why we really want to do this adjustable kettlebell, is because yep. you know a lot of these workouts that, that you and I are used to is like, okay, we're using percentages, yeah. and so you have to change weights. But how many people who aren't gym owners can really afford to have uh, all these kettlebells? You know what I mean? And either don't have the space for it, you don't have the money for like. You know, whole it becomes set. another sick obsession. Yeah. So just helping regular people be able to do what you know how professionals train, you know, is is another problem we're trying to solve. Um, even with the adjustable kettlebells out there market, you can't do one minute on, thirty seconds off because you cannot change the weight in thirty seconds. No. So you're, you're um, yeah. All right. Any parting words? Any parting words? Uh, I don't have any words of wisdom for you. I mean, <laughs> you can do anything you set your mind to. Just go out and do it. You know. You know what? Here's here's something. So many people go looking for other. They go asking for the answers. You know what I found? Nobody has the answers to the questions that you're asking. They're all like. In nature, you have to look in nature, you have to look at yourself. It's like people don't have confidence in themselves. They contemplate themselves. long enough. Yeah, they don't have confidence in themselves to actually figure things out on their own. Um, there's no handbook out there about opening a gym or uh, creating a product or anything like that. You just have to do it. And yeah. then if you have a good idea and you're passionate about it, everything else will come. You just gotta put work into it. Right on. Yeah.
Thanks, thanks.